Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode 11 of Behind the Diaries. This week that you're gonna see is a crazy week. If you've ever liked what we do on the Diary this year with our trailers, we're gonna give away some of the secrets on how we do it. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. Nice to meet you all. Thank you for coming. Nice to meet you, Daniel. Yeah. We've been trying to solve this for, I think, 12 months ago. We started on, on dubbing and hired Charles to solve it for us. And it's such an interesting challenge to solve. Yeah. I, I read um, some of the early stuff. Yeah. Some of the stuff was shown. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you think of it? No, I thought it was good. I mean, but uh, as you know, the technology is like... Moving quickly. Yeah. Spanish is pretty good. Spanish Steve sounds compelling. La mayoría de las empresas cuando Apple entra en su territorio están temblando de miedo. ¿Cómo fue en tu oficina ese día cuando Apple Music lanzó un producto competidor? I promised my girlfriend because she speaks Portuguese, Spanish and French. So I made a deal with her at the start of this year that I would learn how to speak Spanish. Now I've been very busy. <coughs> But I played her the, 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 the translation. I said, babe, there you go. Yeah. Three months to spare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Daniel Eck has just left, founder of Spotify, and we are now going to review all of the notes that I got from our trackpad under the table. For anybody that doesn't know, this iPad in front of me he records everything the guest is saying in real time, and you can see all these highlights here. So all of these highlights are things that I thought were interesting. And while the guest was speaking, I clicked the trackpad under the table while looking at them. They can't see me clicking it. Um, and it saves my notes, which means that afterwards, instead of having to write notes while they're speaking, I can sit down with the team um, and share the things that I thought were interesting. And from that, they start to construct different story arcs and narratives and different ways we can go with it. And then that feeds into the story arc, right? What's your take on it? Yeah, so part of our job is condensing a two hour long podcast into 90 seconds, given enough value in that trailer that not only will people understand the entire context of what they're about to see, but we leave a few nuggets in there that we make a promise to you that if you watch the full two hours, you're gonna learn some valuable knowledge. And what have you written there? So what I do is when I listen to the episode, we'll go through and take preliminary notes that we think stand out and what we think the audience would love to hear. There's a lot of doodles, a lot of highlights, a lot of notes, and then we'll have a meeting with Steve and literally pan through his notes and our notes, collaborate on what worked and what we think didn't work and what could be put into the trailer. In the trailers that Diabasio do, you get, there's clues as to how to create a great movie, a great billboard, a great static image, like there's clues in there for how anyone could be great at marketing, especially when they're dealing with algorithms and platforms. So it'd be good if like, just follow the journey of you creating this particular trailer sure. to show the how you make the decisions. And the, the subtleties, the things that always, I always love are the little gun cocking sound effect on Ashley Williams. Some of the things that go through my head scare me. The Will I Am brain scan moment of the right? What's it like to be in your head? You're always thinking, analyzing everything. Get it, get it, go, go, make it, make it. That's not good. That's not healthy. Yeah. Michael Moore and Michael Jackson, that was oh, yeah. Great one. Yeah. Where does the desire to be on stage come from? Michael Jackson. I wanted to make music. What was your favorite moment in the trailers that you've done? Uh, the Dane Dash for me is still when he lights a cigarette. That whole stint of your career, the Rockefeller chapter, do you have any regrets surrounding that when you I, look back? I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have been so generous with Jay. It, was more it almost friend. slightly interrupts you. Yeah. And it gives him this weird sort of power because the whole trailer is building him up as someone who just... Doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't give a fuck about <laughs> anything. This is a guy who founded Jay-Z and Kanye. He don't care. He knows, he knows what he's good at. That's so interesting, that that you can actually tell a story about a pers who a person is with just the edit. Like the... Mm. Cool, so try and follow this one if you can. What to do? Hello, yeah. nice to All see right. you again. Nice see you. Really good. And you guys, I can already tell, you guys have done a better job landing in America than I have here. Like, by the way, I'm going to show this on camera. 
you're fucking everywhere. Just stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the airport, and I see you running across a thing. And then I get on the plane, and I'm watching my safety video, and I see this handsome dude showing me how to put on my suit. Is that the same guy? I'm obsessed, I'm obsessed with the affirmation of other. I'm always on all the charitable looking at podcasts. Mm. You keep coming up. Yeah. I was kicking your ass in the U.S., and now you're like... Hey, what happened? <laughs> it's these guys. Good team. There's, there's a lot of us there, isn't there? There's almost 30 now. Yeah. 30 of us in this team. Yeah. One of the things I've always mulled with is when we think about the stats we've discussed in the crisis and the issues in society, yeah. um, the direction of travel and how we're living our lives, more digital, yeah. more alone, yeah. more lonely. Um, there fe it feels like the solution must be quite deep, systemic in the way that we're designing our society. So I, I, the question I've always wondered is, do we have to just like rip up the entirety of the blueprint of how society is designed? I think it's what we said before. I think it's that for the first time in our society, a 30 year old isn't doing as well as his or her parents. That's a fundamental breakdown in the compact between a family and a society. And they get angry and they blame the government or they start demonizing and then someone fills that void and starts demonizing other groups and says, oh, it's not your fault, it's their fault. And that can lead to very ugly places in history. My solutions are pretty straightforward. If you have the average 70 year old is 72% wealthier than they were 40 years ago, and the average person under the age of 40 is 24% less wealthy, and the percentage of wealth as a percentage of GDP controlled by people under the age of 40 has been cut in half, and a house is 12 times more expensive than it was 40 years ago, but their income is only 6x what it used to be, we have too much money being crowded into not only the rich, but the old. I think putting more money in the pockets of young people uh, and reducing the rage and the shame and the deaths of despair uh, and the lo would go so far to solving loneliness. See you soon, mate. See you. Thank you. Obviously that first book's called Happy Sex and Millionaire, which I think people that don't read it don't quite understand why I called it that, but I was, when I was 12, because we didn't have any money, I was so obsessed with like getting money, and um, I started practicing my signature. Do you know what that is? Oh, pounds. <laughs> <laughs> That's from when I was 12. Thank you. Thank you so much. But you were saying actually that it was um, your, happy to get the message out of the book and you know rather than doing all the promo just like making sure your voice is out there it's... yeah i don't care about promo of the book so the things that i wrote in the book are like things that i just have just been on my mind for a couple of years so but for me it was nice it was a nice process it's updated my thoughts a little bit the process of writing teaches you more than it teaches anyone else and so, which jungle were you in when you wrote this one this one i was in i was in ubud so the first one i did at ubud in costa rica mm -hmm. i go to the jungle with a bunch of notes so if you look at my evernote mm -hmm. you'll see business book idea the notes are like this. So for example, the progress principle, something I read about, and I was like, that's a really interesting concept to expand upon. The useless absurdity one is a good example. And that's the note I took to the jungle, which is like brew dog beer showers, Tesla Easter eggs, nobody used to slide in the office. The useless absurdity defines more than useful practicality. I'd go to the jungle and just expand upon that mm -hmm. for a couple of days. So without further ado, please help me welcome Stephen Bartlett. <laughs> People think that like the podcast is good because we have like great guests or whatever, or like, you know, some people are like, oh, you're good, you're good at asking questions. Absolutely fucking not. <laughs> but honestly, that's that's completely. And I watch people do like dissections of like how it how it got big, and I just think I think like you're seeing the tip of the iceberg, but the 99% of the experiments that we do, you can't see. When I'm when I had that conversation on the podcast yesterday with Daniel Ek, Daniel walked in and sat down and said, oh, "I love this music." We think a lot about everything, like the music that was playing when you came. Yeah, I like that too. Because it's that. some of yeah. your favourite music. Yeah. The temperature. I did not know you adjusted it to me, but I was like, "Oh, good music." Oh, did. <laughs> did you? <laughs> yeah, we know Daniel because we researched it. <laughs> so, 
Swedish house, ma house ma mafia. Because <laughs> Harry and our team did the research. We, we experiment to a point of absolute craziness because we believe that we don't know the right answer. And we believe in a world that Ray Kurzweil predicts will experience 20,000 years of change in the 21st century. Going to a book or accepting convention's blueprint is not how you're gonna find the right answer. It's purely, you're gonna fail your way there faster than all of your competition. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, now, this is your chance to get the expert thoughts from one of the most successful entrepreneurs in the country at the moment. Please welcome to the stage, Stephen Bartlett. Thank you so much to thank Stephen you. Bartlett and to Paul Boyd. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. What makes you think you started the wrong business? Um, I don't think it's, it's not exciting me as no, There you go, you started the wrong business. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you need excitement to overcome everything. Yeah. That's fine, you can be wrong. I've been wrong so many times. Yeah. I've spent years starting some businesses and realized just the day before it launches that this is a bad idea. Yeah. But you need to... But I'm trying to work out the yeah, now I'm thinking, right, what's my, how do I like move on? Yeah. Time is, time is the most know, important thing right, in life. Right. So you've got to just make, I always say like in business, it's never too late to, rate the, to make the right decision. And because of some cost fallacy, we like, we want to, defend the time we've spent oh my god we've wasted no 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 and that leads to more wasted time okay so you've got to just move on like if you know you've made the wrong decision okay you compound that with every day that you don't make the right one so that okay no that's brilliant thank you Steve. nice to meet you pleasure thank you. Thank you. The conversation around in-room CO2 and CO2 generally, but also just broadly, air quality is only going to increase. Our thinking with this proposition was to create a brand that is packaged nicely for the group of people that are now going to increase their, their concern about air quality. Do you have a previous experience of something similar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so from a, like a brand marketing perspective, over the last 15 years, my job has been to market companies like Uber and Apple, Logitech, Samsung, and then from a more practical experience um, as an entrepreneur, this thing on my wrist here called The Whoop. I'm a partner in their company. But this is maybe the best example of hardware delivering um, actionable insights to make someone's life better. Company's worth four billion now. Um, again, it's the same thing. The founder realized that there's this younger generation that care more about their health and want information about how to improve their health. So that call was with a partner, someone we're hoping to partner with. After James and Esther came on the podcast and talked to me about air care, air quality, breathing, in-room CO2. Carbon dioxide is seen as this poison. Why? Levels over 800 into 1,000 can have serious issues with cognitive and physical functions. And I've been recording our CO2 during this interview. It's going up. And if we were to continue working in here for the next few hours, you will... Jesus. I started doing a lot of research into in-room CO2. And so I got in touch with the best company in the world that make the CO2 hardware devices and asked them if they wanted to start a new business with me, which will make a new type of air care device, which will look beautiful, can sit in everyone's home and tells them about the air quality of the rooms they're in. Uh, super random. I was up one, late one night thinking about some of the healthcare and wellness trends and I just got a spark of inspiration. And this is how companies start for me sometimes and businesses and ideas start. You just have a thought and dot stars align in your head. It was like 2 a.m. in the morning and one of the things that came to mind was air care. And I think it's an inevitability. I think it's a way of coming into short. Who knows, this could be the start of zero. You may never hear this again, or this could be the start of a massive business. Who knows? We will find out soon. We will find out soon. So I'm Anne, I'm Head of Traders here, and what you've seen in there is a meeting between me and Steve, which takes place twice a week. 
and that's a chance for me to show him where I'm at with the foundation narratives for the trailers that are going out in the future. Editing is a very technical job. So I've done maybe around about 200 of these trailers now. The reality of it is there are aspects of what we do when we create trailers that you can implement into any part of your life. And there's two in particular that I think everyone should take away from it. The first one is this idea that story is king and just how vital telling the story can be. Let me get my pen. The best way to explain this whole idea of a story arc is to actually draw it for you. Okay, so here's our graph. And you have our length here, which is the duration. And up here is what I call motion. Essentially to create a powerful storyline that's gonna result in people creating action on your behalf, we need to play to their emotions. So what we tend to do is start with our hook, which is on our checklist here. And that's usually because we've got about three seconds to grab the audience's attention on social media. It is beyond an emergency. It's the biggest thing we need to do today. It's bigger than climate change. We f up. So you want to start up here. So if you're going into your meeting on Monday, the first thing you want to do is you don't want to start any meeting or any presentation flat. You don't want to start slow. You want to pique their interest at the start and then the job becomes how do you keep them engaged? And the way you want to do that is through of these up and down moments. So you'll have high energy, slightly low energy, and you'll slowly build up to high energy again. And then sometimes you might drop all the way down. And so this graph will change with every trader, every presentation, every story that you tell. But essentially what you never want is this straight line. But there's also one other thing that I think is unbelievably vital. And this is the idea of the 1%. The idea of the 1% is every aspect of work that you do, try and elevate it by 1%. In our sense, how do we adapt the trailers and add that extra little bit of 1% to keep an audience engaged and to keep the ideas fresh, to give them a viewing experience that they feel like they've not had before. And what you essentially end up with is my first trailer that I ever done for Diet, which was about this big, about five lines, of, of footage with some text to what we see today, which is about 17 channels, all these sound effect lanes, all of this music. And you can really see visually from here just how many of these 1% have compounded to create what we think are unbelievably impactful trailers that elevate their podcast to the next level. Right, so I've got to get back to Daniel at Trailer because that's due in like two days. So um, you can go back to Steve. <laughs> Just finished my meeting here with the team at Until. For any of you that don't know, I'm a co-founder and an investor in a company called Until, which is, in essence, a business that gives freelance health and wellness practitioners and medical practitioners now everything they need to grow their business. State-of-the-art equipment, community, and a flexible model so they're not tied into anything. And I really, really believe that's what freelance wellness professionals need, whether you're a personal trainer, a therapist, a coach, a dentist, whatever you are. And today we're talking about opening our third site, which opens next week down at Marlebone in London, right in the middle of that sort of medical district. So, so this particular site's gonna have a lot more dental and medical facilities, which I'm very excited about. And the space is absolutely beautiful. And now, I'm gonna go downstairs with Dan, who's one of the co-founders of Until, because do you remember when I went to Soccer Aid? It was one in, in one of the early vlogs. I, I pulled my hamstring and I've spent the last three, four, five months really trying to train up my ham, hamstring to see if it's still strong. There's a machine downstairs which tells you how strong your legs are individually. Now I'm guessing that my right leg, the one where I got the injury, is gonna be a little bit weaker, but the machine downstairs, it's honestly so fascinating, tells you about the imbalance or balance of strength. And this is super important because if you've ever had an injury in your life ever, whether you've pulled your back, you've pulled an arm, you've pulled a leg, whatever it is, 
um, you could be really prone to injury right now. So fingers crossed, I'm gonna go downstairs, do the test with Dan, and because Soccer Aid's coming up next year, and I hope I play, I hope I'm picked, I hope I'm asked to play, um, I wanna know when I can get back training for Soccer Aid. So let's go do this test, come with me. So these have got sensors down at the bottom, so when you complete exercise and you pull against these, we measure the amount of force that's been pulled up. Okay. 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 Let me just make sure this is connected. I'm going to go for a max pull in this position, five seconds, and I'm going to look at both to see if both lines are like uh, the same, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. So going in three, two, one, and pull, 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 pull. pull. So you can already see there's still strength efficiency. So before you push on too much, you need to balance those force outputs out. So Blue line is my left leg. That's how strong my left leg is. And the orange line is how strong my right leg was, which was the injured leg. Generally, when we look at overall strength patterns um, and we look at force output, what we like to see is a fair balance between left and right. If we can see a large discrepancy, it basically means you're at risk to injury. So what Stephen now needs to do is implement a training protocol that will close that gap and uh, minimize the risk of injury again. Well, I mean, that for me is shocking anyway. <laughs> sure. Thank you so much, appreciate Pleasure. it. Thank Pleasure. you, thanks for the time. Pleasure. So Pleasure. interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much. What's your name? James. Nice to meet you, Stephen. Nice Pleasure. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening. It means a lot to me. I love your shoes. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs>
stereotype threat. One of the things I talk about in this book is a lot about stereotype threats, where in like maths exams, if they, if they remind you of your, your ethnicity before you do the exam, mm. performance drops in the exam. Why is that? Mm. They don't yeah. do that. I've, 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 I'm on page like 100 right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so so I just think that. that's what I always want to make sure that, like, yeah, it's obje so like objectively it's true that there's going to be a lot of challenges, mm. but those, those are their challenges. You feel okay. what I'm saying? Well, that's their right. problem. You know, I don't want to take any more. Of no, I appreciate though, it. Really nice to meet you. Come and I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. Yes. yes. Hello, you're right. Small businesses are a big deal. Homegrown empires and family legacies. I'm Stephen Bartlett, and alongside Vodafone Business and their V-Hub team, this is Digital SOS. I'm here in Bishop Stortford to meet Amelia, who runs Apex Gym, because she sent Vodafone Business this SOS. I run a gym called Apex Strength and Wellness. I wanted a place where everyone felt like they could just be themselves and they could belong. Show your muscles. Oof. How many times do you come here a week? Three times a week. <laughs> More. It's not like your bigger gyms where you go in and you don't really talk to anybody. It's like it brings like family atmosphere. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> oh Amelia. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you? You're yeah, right. Nice. Nice to meet you. Nice to you. I've come to get involved, if that's okay. Oh, brilliant! Yeah. Good. Two, one, two, good. One, two. one good. Three. Okay, everyone, grab some water. So, tell me about Apex. I work roughly around seventy-ish hours a week. A week. It's hard. It's like sometimes you feel like your life's a roller coaster because it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. Apex got into rent arrears. So we set up a GoFundMe page and we raised enough money to pay off the rent. You helped with the crowdfund. Yeah. What have you seen? Uh, a fighter who sometimes has felt like she can't go another round, but has done. She's built a, an amazing thing. Thank you. Good girl. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, thank you so, so much. You do it with Honestly, It's been amazing. Thank you. Yeah, no, I've learned. I'm going to give you some nice, delicious food. We just finished up filming a campaign with Vodafone. Super exciting. Um, but I think the most important thing was meeting Amelia and spending time at Apex Gym and getting to understand her business and it really moved me because people come there just for a coffee because they have no friends, because they're lonely, because they're disconnected, because they need somewhere to belong and she's created a place in the community for them to not just have that community centre but to work out their bodies, to exercise which is great for their mental health as well as their body and these places are so important but places like that are dying out because it's difficult if you're a small business owner to do everything you need to do to run the business and to think about marketing and social media and finance and all of these things and she's so wonderful she actually was close to losing the business so let's keep Amelia's business going let's keep her doing what she's doing um, so I'm gonna make a donation I'm gonna donate 10,000 pounds I'm not gonna tell her but because I found the link online I'm sure she'll I'm sure she'll figure it out at some point um, and if anyone else wants to join me in making a donation the link is in the description below. Donate with Apple Pay. Let's try this. Done. Done. That is a really wonderful thing that I have the, the privilege of being able to help. That is a really wonderful thing. It makes all the, all the hard work and all that worthwhile, you know? That you can help a good person. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for getting this far in the vlog. And if you're still here, just give me 30 seconds. That's all I ask from you, because I want to say something. In 2023, we're going to make sure that this vlog is published every week, every single week. Currently, we're bi-weekly. Every single week on Sunday at 6 p.m. We want to go even deeper. And I really want you to come on this journey with me, because I, once upon a time, I used to do a vlog on a different channel that doesn't even exist anymore. And it was such a wonderful relationship that I developed with the people that... Um, were they like early subscribers of the show? So, here's what I want to ask from you. I'm gonna ask for two favors, I'm gonna be super cheeky. Favor number one, if you like it, hit the like button. Because honestly, me and Will, it's one of the first things we look at when, we, um, when this vlog goes out. 
So please hit the like button. And the second thing is, please can you hit the subscribe button? We've hit 100,000 subscribers on this channel, which is incredible in 11 episodes. And you got, honestly, like, honestly, if you just want us to do more of this, the simplest thing you can do is just hit the subscribe button. That's like, there's nothing else I'll ever ask of you. It's just to hit the subscribe button. Um, Will has got dreams and I've got plans of inc incorporating real incredible creative storytelling into this with animation and um, even trying to publish more often so you get more of an up-to-date feeling of what's going on in our world and you get to see more things behind the scenes and bring in more of my meetings and more of the value and we can do all of those things if this channel continues to continues to grow as it is. So thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you very, very much. And you guys that watch me, it means the world to both myself and Will who's behind the camera. So thank you. If you could just hit the subscribe button and like the video, that'd be very much appreciated. Thank you. See you later. Ah! Shit, Jesus Christ.